Hello everybody, welcome back to the freezer section of my channel. Today we're looking at more iceberg content. We're going to finish up the latest iceberg I've been working on, which is anti-piracy methods in video games. Uh, we have about three more layers to go and quite a lot of interesting topics to discuss. And we're just going to go ahead and hop in with layer four. Michael Jackson, the experience. Michael Jackson is known for a lot of things. Uh, his incredible pop music, his insane dance skills, his uh, friendly nature with children, but mostly his video games. I remember this one on Super Nintendo. I never actually played it as a kid, but I've seen a lot of coverage of it over the years. And looking back on it, it looks like a decent platformer. I'm probably wrong about that, but regardless, uh, Nintendo and Ubisoft decided to bank off the success of Michael Jackson, the experience, the movie, and also Michael Jackson's freshly deceased corpse and released just, well, well, this. Regardless of this very obvious cash grab, the game actually features something pretty terrifying if you ended up running across it. If the game detected you were playing a pirated copy, it would proceed to blare loud horns over the game's audio. And considering you probably bought the game to hear all of Michael Jackson's hits, uh, this one really makes this game fucking unplayable. And not to mention, it also shows its true colors, because without the music, this game really is just a shitty ragdoll flash game you'd find on fucking miniclip or some shit. Rabby Ribby. Game developers have really started to use Steam to benefit them when it uh, comes to using anti-piracy measures. Uh, the developers for this weeb game called Rabby Ribby uh, took it upon themselves to develop a system in which if Steam detected that the game was trying to unlock all of the DLC, it wouldn't progress past the first chapter. Considering most cracked versions of games usually come pre-zipped with DLC included, uh, this was a pretty genius way of checking. If the game ends up detecting faulty DLC and realizes you're playing a pirated copy, uh, it will stop you from being able to progress in the game. But that's not really the only thing it does. As a final swan song before the pirate realizes they've been found out, the game will open a Steam game page window for each frame that passes within the game. This will no doubt freeze most modern computers within minutes. Yo, catch me fucking robbing the military computers from Area 51 so I can pirate Rabby Ribby and run it. The Witcher 2. The Witcher 2 is a game that is often overshadowed by its bigger brother, Witcher 3. And I, I remember liking Witcher 2 a lot. I played a lot back in the day and I, I, I never finished it, so I really hope to get back to it soon. If you know anything about The Witcher, it isn't afraid to show some skin. Geralt got some skin, Voldemort over here has some skin, Miss fucking Bo Peep down there has some skin. Uh, in the game, you can partake in sexual intercourse, because if it isn't the dinosaur chicken nuggets, it's going to be the sex mini games that get your incel mind to sleep tonight. Thank you for the gold, kind stranger. Anyway, CD Projekt Red decided to check the game's anti-piracy, and if it revealed that it was, a, in fact, a legal copy, they would replace the models of the characters uh, Geralt has sex with. Now he gets to fuck some MILFs. Well, depends on your definition of MILFs. The models are actually replaced by grotesque older women. This is such an off thing that it really doesn't even affect the main game, but when you think of who's actually pirating Witcher 2, it's probably the same person who this affects very greatly. So good job, CD Projekt Red. You know your audience. Crisis Chicken Gun. Not many of the pirating punishments have actually sounded fun so far. A lot of deleting your save files here and freezing your entire computer there. But in the case for Crisis, the punishment for downloading a cracked version of the game is your bullets are replaced by chickens. That's right, instead of you out there emptying a whole fucking drum full of ammo, you're gonna be out there em emptying a whole drum full of hot and spicy McChickens. It actually looks like the chickens stay in the game for a bit, which means if you spawn too many in, this could ultimately crash your game. Regardless, this was a pretty cool easter egg for pirated copies, and many who actually legitimately bought the game really wanted to use the chicken gun. So, in the end, was it really right, or was it promoting piracy? Pugsy. Now, I've never heard of Pugsy before this, but it was a game developed by Sega and is classified as a side-scroller puzzle game. The game will end up trying to detect if there is any SRAM in the cartridge, and this is the main way it detects for bootleg copies. If the game does fail the SRAM bootleg check, it will continue as usual, but it will unknowingly to the pirate decrease the height of the player's jump. If you try to continue on, which is difficult but possible, the game will actually stop the player's progress after a few levels and throw up a screen that reads, Okay, that's all the levels of Pugs that you're allowed to play. Now go and play a cartridge version of the game instead of this silly copy. Until then, bye, idiot. Traveler's Tell 93. That's weird, but fuck you, Pugsy, for calling my copy silly. I got it from a fucking flea market. How was I supposed to know, you silly, stupid, fucking time-traveling bitch? La Abedia de Crimin, which I totally butchered. 
otherwise known as the Abbey of Crime, was an early murder mystery game that released for the MS-DOS. The game was never actually translated into English, however, a fan-made translation does exist. The anti-piracy for this game legitimately unsettled me when I was uh, doing research for it. If you saw the Batman with Paul Dano's Riddler, then you surely remember the scene where his character randomly burst out singing Ave Marie. Yeah, just remember that scene. Now imagine the end of that scene, the movie fades to a black screen that starts playing a one-word track that says Pirata, or Pirate in Spanish. This is what happens in the Abbey of Crime anyways. Yeah, no lie, they actually have an 8-bit version of Ave Marie playing before my nightmares come to life on screen. Why did this have to be so eerie? The game doesn't even look that fun. You really think people are gonna go pirate this version in fucking droves? Mario Kart DS Anti-Piracy Mario Kart DS was another one of the games alongside Animal Crossing Wild World that Miyamoto made sure to add high-tech security to. This one, however, was spawned straight out of a nightmare Miyamoto had. He described in an interview with game journalist Greg Miller High Life that he was dreaming of a long, dark hallway, and at the end of the hallway, a large vacuum cleaner with a face of popular character Bowser on it. The vacuum proceeded to chase Miyamoto down the hallway until he reached a ledge. Peering over the ledge, Miyamoto barely made out the words, It is a crime to pirate games. With that, he turned around and the sound of the vacuum had become so unbearable at this point, he turned and yelled, I got a legal copy! at the top of his lungs. Then he awoke and immediately started to program the anti-piracy screen for Mario Kart DS directly after his dream. Everything from the Bowsertron to the being chased down a hallway. However, the main difference from his dream is he made Mario contort into himself to give the player the feeling Miyamoto had during the dream. The screen ends just as his dream did with an error screen asking players to restart the system. That would be the case, but Miyamoto never sleeps so he can never dream, therefore this one is fake as fuck. It's a bug in your moral code. Sometimes game developers aren't willing to be so public about their anti-piracy screens. They would rather hide their anti-piracy screens and have the pirates weed themselves out. Uh, this is exactly what happened with Batman Arkham Asylum. In an ancient foreign post, a user posted about some trouble with uh, Batman's cape in the game. The post reads, Hi, I've got a problem where it's time to use Batman's glide in the game. When I hold space, like it's said to jump from one platform to another, Batman tries to open his wings again and again instead of gliding. So he fells down in a poisoning gas. If somebody could tell me, what should I do there? To which a few people responded. The response have revealed that this bug of sorts wasn't actually a problem with the game, but purposeful to prevent piracy of the game. However, what makes this entry stand out is the absolute slam fucking dunk of response an IDOS member responded with to the post. Here's the response. The problem you have encountered is a hook in the copy protection to catch out people who try and download cracked versions of the game for free. It's not a bug in the game's code. It's a bug in your moral code. Mm, what a line. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? Clearly, don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. It's a bug in your moral code. Just Dance 2021. I'm gonna be honest, after Far Cry 6 released, I feel like everyone should pirate every fucking Ubisoft game from here on out. Catch me getting five for life for illegally downloading Mario and Rabbit's Sparks of Hope. However, Ubisoft knows that their games aren't worth the real money, so they've taken proper steps to defend their shitty fucking games. Just Dance 2021 has a very complex system for checking anti-piracy and it will actually allow the player to play a decent bit of the game until the check comes in. However, when the check is tripped, a screen telling you that the copy is illegal will pop up and will send you back to the main menu. Just Dance 2021 doesn't actually have an anti-piracy check, truthfully. But this fake mock-up is one of the most believable fake anti-piracy screens. Nothing about it screams super creepy or scary, and it definitely didn't go too far with a decomposing Luigi in the corner or something. You gotta admit, even if it's more realistic, it's not all that creepy. Hey man, where's Rayman hanging from a rope from the ceiling when I pirate the new Rayman game that won't ever actually come out because it takes actual work to make those fucking games? Animal Crossing New Horizon. Honestly, the scariest thing about Animal Crossing New Horizons at this point is the fact it's not going to get any more updates. But there is something even scarier hidden in the game's code. If you so happen to stumble upon a pirated copy of New Horizons, you will be able to play New Horizons fully for the most part. That is, until you decide to take a boat ride with Captain. Once you hit the high seas with Captain, you may start to notice Dude isn't singing his usual sea shanties. Instead, he starts singing about pirates and how stuff shouldn't be stolen. Wait, is Captain going to 
godfather to me? Come on, Sonny, let's go fishing at 12 a.m. Nothing's gonna happen or anything. You actually do arrive to the destination untouched. Captain has basically become irate at this point and threatens to leave the player on the island. Then he fucking does. He decides enough is enough and fires the boat back up and rides back into town without you. Animal Crossing New Horizon just became a survival game akin to the forest. The player has to get crafty with gathering and reproducing food. The coconuts should be a good start for that. And fucking get comfy because Captain isn't coming back. And worse yet, you didn't even think about this. You're in international water. So no matter what, Captain can't be held responsible for abandoning you in a lawless land. Now that, that's fucked up. There, there is a worthwhile note though, and people who have been playing Animal Crossing New Horizons since the beginning may note, uh, Captain wasn't always in New Horizons, and they patched this in uh, with the new update. Uh, they patched in this authenticator when he was added, and anyone who pirated the game beforehand was just let off scot-free. Also, this one is hella fake, but a great concept overall. Nintendo Dogs. 2005 was a really rough year for the Miyamoto family. They had some issues with family pet, and ultimately the pet had to be put down by Miyamoto himself. To commemorate his dog's honor, he put a team at Nintendo up to developing a dog simulator game for Nintendo DS. Thus, Nintendo Dogs was born. The game featured an array of ways you could care for your virtual dog, and was supposed to be a spiritual successor to Tomagachi pets. Certain developers on Nintendo Dogs have revealed an unreleased anti-piracy check that went too far for Nintendo, and it was revealed that Miyamoto really pushed for the check to be in the final release. Nintendo, being a family-friendly company we all know, quickly brushed this under the rug and Miyamoto was not happy about it. Then a few years after the game's release, an insider leaked the anti-piracy check in this video. In the video, we can see a demo of what's happening when you play a pirated copy of Nintendo Dogs. And the game actually starts normally with the player being able to pick out a dog. You can actually do a lot with a dog before the anti-piracy check even affects your game. But much like Miyamoto's real dog, tragedy strikes out of nowhere. A passive message casually mentions that your dog has become sick with scurvy. And after a few more days, worse comes to worse, and the dog passes away. A message saying Nintendo Dogs can only live in legitimate copies of the game uh, is shown before a camera zooming in on your recently deceased dog's grave uh, begins. Nobody was shocked that this didn't make it in the final game, and everyone at Nintendo became a little more wary of Miyamoto from there on. This one is really fake, and is pretty fucked up, and Miyamoto never had a dead dog. He probably did, but... I don't think it was the inspiration for Nintendo Dogs, but what an origin story if that was true. Cross Days. A Japanese manga game known as Cross Days has a pretty fucked up consequence system for pirates. Considering this game was pretty niche, nobody expected the game to have an elaborate pirate check system, but man were they fucking wrong, and they paid the price. <laughs> the game would check if it was a pirated copy, and if it succeeded, a window would pop up that would disguise itself as a survey to the player. This looked like a typical survey that would maybe appear at the end of a demo or beta. So, players took the time to fill out the survey, would then have their information uploaded to an online database where it, along with a picture of the user's desktop, could be seen by anyone. The system basically doxed anyone who tried to play this game illegally. You also kind of have to wonder what kind of things were on these people's desktops who are choosing to illegally obtain adult manga games. Probably better left unseen, let's be honest. Sonic the Hedgehog. Sega was a little more level-headed with their anti-piracy screens, at least when it came to their most popular franchise, Sonic. The original Sonic the Hedgehog is one of the most popular games out there, and that means it was also one of the most pirated games. Sega foresaw the huge success of the game and decided to add in a secret anti-piracy screen. However, after much consideration, they decided to bar the screen from the game and removed it entirely. Or so we thought. There's a very complicated way to still access the screen in a legitimate Sonic the Hedgehog Sega Genesis cartridge. After accessing the music select and choosing the track B0, and then selecting Green Hill Zone, you will play the game as normal. However, about halfway through the level, you will want to turn around and start racing to the beginning of the stage. Running left is very strange for a side-scrolling platformer, and is one of the main reasons the screen went unfound for so long. After running back to the beginning of the level, Sonic stumbles upon a big ring, not unlike the others in the game. When you touch the ring, Sonic fades out of obscurity, and a screen with a disappointed Sonic shows up. Sonic states the usual anti-piracy message, but then asks the player ominously why they're still here, and states you shouldn't be here. After a few more Sonic, after a few more Sonics. Wow. After a few more seconds, Sonic fades out, but before he does, we can see his eyes vanish first, leaving dark sockets to haunt our five-year-old brains. Thank God they hid this behind a convoluted set of circumstances to trigger in the game. And also thank God this one was fake, <laughs> because could you imagine legitimately sitting down with Sonic and having a heart-to-heart -heart about stealing, then his eyes disintegrate and he disappears? I don't know, man. I, th I think I'd rather my virtual dog die, to be honest. 
Super Mario Odyssey. Mario Odyssey is one of the most lighthearted games on the market. You couldn't argue me otherwise. I mean, the color choices alone make it a game that can only bring me joy. Therefore, I'm not even going to try to convince you that this anti-piracy screen was real. It was a great attempt, but they definitely went too heavy on the grotesque pictures of Mario. Did they really need to add a pun to the screen? Like, hey, Luigi, did you hear Mario went out to lunch? Oh, ho, ho, don't you mean la lunch? No. Mario and Luigi super drunk driving for. By now, I'm sure most of us have played at least one or two Mario games, right? I mean, Mario has a ton of hits. But he also has some games that haven't really been in the limelight, so to speak. Take like Mario Picross, for example, or better yet, Mario and Luigi Super Drunk Driving 4. Obviously, this is a fan game because Nintendo doesn't want to promote drunk driving, even though Reggie Filzame has about six DUIs that Nintendo swept under the rug. But hey, whatever. Even fan games need some anti-piracy screens sometimes. And if there was ever a game that needed a screen telling you not to do crime, it's the game where you drive drunk. This game isn't actually real and this anti-piracy screen isn't real, but you must commend the creator of the screen for making an anti-piracy screen for a game that doesn't even exist. Or at least I don't think it exists. Catch me asking where I can find Mario and Luigi Super Drunk Driving 4 at the Walmart Electronics section. Alright everybody, that was the second half of the anti-piracy iceberg. If you'd like to see the first half, uh, it will be linked in the description along with the iceberg playlist. If you like iceberg videos, I've done quite a few at this point. And I will do more in the future. If you have any ideas for icebergs, uh, let me know. I will continue to just do things that interest me. But uh, if there are ideas uh, of icebergs that you think are uh, pretty interesting, just let me know. And uh, leave a like if you did enjoy. Uh, those help me to know to do more of these. And uh, as always, subscribe if you're new. And thanks for watching.